Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I want to explain something that I realise a lot of people have an enormous difficulty in understanding, and that is what a bank account is. Now, you wouldn't think that this is something that is conceptually desperately difficult, but actually, that is exactly what it is. Why? Because it seems that the vast majority of people still think that a bank account somehow represents something physical and tangible or real, and it isn't any of those things at all. In fact, it simply records a debt, and you can't see a debt. It isn't anything that can as such be counted, except by looking at the record in a set of accounts. And that is what a bank account is. The clue is in the name. It's an account. Now, what does that mean? It means that when you think you put money into your bank, there is no pile of cash there that is yours, you know, labelled with your name on it. There is no gold. There's nothing behind it. All that happens is that the bank acknowledges that they owe you whatever you think you've paid in back. So let's use an example. Suppose you pay in a thousand pounds. The bank then says, if you want that money back, they acknowledge that they owe you that money. One thousand pounds is yours to claim. Well, subject to any conditions attached. So for example, if you put it in a deposit account, which has a five year repayment period on it, you can have it back in five years time. But if it's in a normal current account, you can have it on demand. Now, that's all that the record in the bank account means. The bank will repay you, subject to one really important condition, of course, which is that they can repay you. Now, that is dependent upon the bank's own solvency. And what happened in 2008 was all the banks realised that it was quite possible for another bank in the UK to go bust because two things happened. One, Northern Rock tried to go bust in 2007. It was the first bank in the UK in 160 years that it had a run on it. In other words, it had suffered a loss of customer confidence and those customers wanted their money back at a rate faster than the bank was literally able to pay. Of course, the Bank of England stepped in and Northern Rock was bailed out and saved as far as the depositors were concerned. And second, a major bank, which of course none of us bank with, it was effectively a merchant bank, Lehman Brothers failed and a lot of commercial banks suffered as a consequence because they traded with it. Now, it is therefore possible for a bank to fail, to not repay what's owed to you. And that's important because all that the banks acknowledge to you is that they owe you money. I stress again, there is nothing in a vault with your name in it. It doesn't say that pile of cash is yours and no one else's. No, it just says, if we can, we'll repay you. Now, this also matters when it comes to making payments between accounts. There's an enormous confusion about what happens when the government makes a payment into the banking system. And I want to mention that as well, because when the government pays from the Bank of England or via the Bank of England into the commercial banking system, because, for example, it's going to make a pe benefit payment to someone or it's going to pay a supplier for the services they've supplied to the state or it's going to make a tax refund or whatever other reason it might be. The payment goes from the Bank of England to a commercial bank or actually no payment passes between them at all in reality. What happens is the Bank of England increases the value, the total amount of the money that it records as owing to the commercial bank. In other words, there isn't a pile of cash that changes hands. There is nothing physical that takes place. There's just an entry in a book of accounts. That's again why this is called a central bank reserve account. And then the money doesn't go out of the other side of the central bank reserve account, which is what this commercial bank holds. So 
it records that it's owed money by the Bank of England. But it doesn't reduce that debt from the Bank of England by then making the payment on behalf of the government to whoever their customer is, you or me. No, there's a separate account to record the transactions between us. What happens is, for example, when the government pays the commercial bank, the commercial bank records that it's owed more by the government. That's called a debit in its accounts. When it pays the customer, it records that it owes that customer more money. That's a credit in the customer's account. And you're used to seeing credits in your account when you think you've got more money in the bank. You have no more money at the bank. You just have the bank recognizing that he owes you more. That is how banking works. Banking does not move anything tangible or real or something that most people think of as money. We confuse money with cash. There is no cash in any of these transactions. It's just double entry bookkeeping. But very importantly, this gives rise to another fact. When a bank lends money to somebody, they do it in a very particular way. They open for that customer a loan account. The loan account records the customer's promise to repay the bank. As far as the bank is concerned, that loan is an asset. They own a debt from the customer. They also open for the customer a current account. And into that current account, they put the credit part of the entry. The credit is literally the fact that they've now promised that if the customer tells them to pay someone, they will make a payment on the customer's behalf. In other words, they owe the customer the balance on the current account and will pay it to whoever the customer wants it settled to. Now, this means there are two entries in the bank's books to record a loan, a debit, loan account, a credit, current account. But when the customer comes to repay the loan, the credit, of course, will be cleared. And so will the debit be cleared. The entry is effectively reversed and the money disappears. It doesn't go into another account. It doesn't appear elsewhere. It is simply a record of the transactions between the customer and the bank. So the money doesn't move into someone else's account, although of course there will be consequences. The only thing that is recorded in the account between the customer and the bank is their relationship. Whatever else is impacted is not changed by their relationship. So when the loan is repaid, the accounts are cleared, wiped clean. Literally, that's what wiping clean your debt means. And it's gone. Now, this is intensely difficult for people to get their heads around. The more I write about this, the harder I realize it is for people to appreciate this very fact that when money is paid into your bank account, there's nothing there and nobody else's account is affected. It's a record between you and the bank. That's it. If you tell the bank to now pay it on to somebody else, they will. But it only changes as such the relationship between you and the bank, except that they will then record the payment to somebody else. But that's a different transaction between the bank and a different customer. It's not your account that as such makes the payment. Your account is reduced. They accept the debt to someone else. They are separate entries. They don't mean that money has moved. They mean that the balance on the accounts has moved. Remember, all money is debt. It's not tangible. It's not backed by gold. It's not backed by notes. It's not backed by coins. It's simply a promise to pay. And the only way in which this promise to pay works is because of double entry bookkeeping. Literally, our whole economy is dependent upon our ability to do accounting. It's an astonishing and, for many people, staggering and unbelievable conclusion, but it's also true. And that is why banks can create money out of thin air, 
by putting entries into bank account ledgers and destroy money by clearing those ledgers when the debt is paid. It's really hard. It's really conceptually difficult. And yet we all use banks every day. And that's what happens. If you get it, you are more powerful because you understand economics in a way that most people never have. If you don't get it, you're still struggling in the dark of economics and understanding how the economy works is something that you're always going to be in the dark about. So try to understand this. It's essential for economics. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'm pleased. If you want to see other videos like this, there are links below this screen. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter as well, at Richard J. Murphy. Look at my blog, Tax Research UK. And if you'd like to donate, because this video series is being largely paid for by donations, there is a donations button on, button on every single post on my blog. Thanks a lot.